What is the subtle sign someone isn't a good person? When they can't apologize. That's such a big one. When they can't genuinely apologize. Another crazy one is when someone will wait to see if you're sorry first. Like, their apology will only exist depending on what you have to say. The idea is if you're actually sorry it doesn't matter a damn what the other person has to say. It's an expression of your own remorse, not a business deal. I've been this person, I'm glad I grew out of it. That was my XGF to a T. Plus I never had any privacy cause anything you do around her she would tell all her friends about it. Even her friends aren't safe from her blabbermouth. My fucking mom is the same way. I share details of my depression with her, and she later tells me about how she relayed all this info to her friends to get their opinions. I was pissed and I was hurt. She still doesn't understand why this might upset me. Yep, my narc mom does this too. I moved in with her following my separation. I was really having a hard time and she told everyone she came in contact with all the details of my situation, even after I asked her to not talk about my life to others. I feel for you. I'm a very private person, keep myself to myself. When I was going through some crap I told my mum in confidence, and the first thing she did was tell all her friends about it. Got questioned about it every time I saw one of them and it made things 10x worse for me. We haven't had a great relationship since, and she still doesn't understand why I won't talk about anything with her. I hope things work out for you and you can amend your relationship. Nothing sucks more than an inability to confide in your parents. They are very concerned with making sure you know they're a good person. I need you to tell me that I'm good, Diane. They often criticize others but can't handle any criticism about themselves at all. A related concern is when they are super nice to you and only criticize or talk down to people who they perceive as beneath them like restaurant servers, grocery store workers, children, etc. If the only reason you're nice to someone is because you perceive them as an equal on some arbitrary human valuation process, then you're the garbage. Every time you interact with them, you feel worse than before. When they apologize during a conflict, they get angry if that doesn't immediately end the conflict because they never truly felt sorry and their only goal was to escape repercussion. This will become evident when the behavior they had apologized for keeps happening and never improves. Signed, someone who has been on both sides of this equation. It does make a person toxic but sometimes they're truly unaware. I've had a habit of trying to get people to accept apologies only to learn that is a form of manipulative behavior I picked up as a kid. I do my best now to work on respecting people's boundaries after an apology. Their feelings are just as valid and I am not automatically entitled to forgiveness immediately. Been on both sides as well. There are already quite a few things being posted that are not uncommon developments for survival during a shit childhood. This does not make someone a bad person. This is why threads like these ultimately can be more damaging than helpful. It's still on us to seek to continue to self-appraise our behaviors and try to improve for our own sakes. But remember that distilling anyone down to a single behavior to pass an extreme judgment on them is itself a problematic behavior. There are also people who are equally shitty because they like to extend a conflict way longer than necessary because they just enjoy the feeling of power when arguing. My ex used to start arguments over things like my forgetfulness. I'd apologize and try and find a resolution and a way to make it up to her. It would get to a point where I'd done and said everything I can to try and make amends. But she's just keep calling me useless, ungrateful, and neglectful. She'd wait until I'd completely run out of words and then shame me for having nothing to say for myself. She degraded me to a point where I was completely dependent on her praise just to feel worthwhile. After a few years of it I'd had enough. She was angry at me because I went to the pub with friends and only had a few minutes for our usual daily phone call. She started arguing after I told her that I loved her and hoped she had a good night but that I was going to get back to be friends. She broke up with me the next day. Having finally decided to stand up for myself, I was of no use to her anymore. 
There are also people who are equally shitty because they like to extend a conflict way longer than necessary because they just enjoy the feeling of power when arguing. Of I'm going through something like this right now. Friend was mad at me for over a month, finally got her to tell me what was wrong it was, I felt, something very minor but I didn't say that. Listened, acknowledged, took responsibility, apologized profusely, and said I would try not to do that again in the future. She accepted my apology, but is still acting angry and passive-aggressive towards me. Like bruh if you need to talk more about it, let's do that, but don't tell me you accept my apology and forgive me and continue to be passively mad. We're adults. Please. I am so tired. This one really hits home for me. I said I was sorry, why are you still mad? Because you've not even admitted fault and I don't think you understand why I'm upset. They cut in line. This is one of the better answers so far. It's simple and people often treat it as a joke, but it's very telling. It demonstrates how they perceive other people. People who cut in line persistently don't see other people as real. It's a pretty clear sign of narcissism and contempt for anyone who doesn't have some kind of power over them. They disregard you often. They are happy to have you listen. They turn away when it's your turn to talk. That perfect. That's the definition of my old friend group. They want to dump their stuff on an emotional dumpster but can't handle any of it on themselves because they can't be bothered to have an ounce of empathy. Anyone who takes advantage of your kindness. How they treat the person serving them at dinner. Personally, I wouldn't want any beef with the dude who handles my food man. I like .my food untampered for sure. Plus, they are just doing their service. A thank you is the least we can do after receiving the food. But what if you ordered beef? Or in general people they deem, below them. Per people, homeless people, disabled people, etc. To paraphrase a line from House, the measure of a person is how they treat people they have power over. Ironically, Hal said this when speaking about his father, despite it being a test he would also fail. Disabled here. That sounds like my parents. One company where I used to work had an excellent interview strategy. For executive positions, take a candidate through a series of stressful morning interviews. Then come up with an unexpected delay and give them a voucher for a free lunch at the restaurant next door. The restaurant would have already been asked to report back on how well they treated staff. Not interacting much was fine, as long as they were polite. Being an ass meant that they weren't getting the offer. I always thought this was some kind of joke. Like, are there actually people out there that treat the server badly? Then I met someone that did. It was very confusing. Turns out they were actually a piece of shit. My ex treated McDonald's workers like shit and I repeatedly told her to be nice to them and their job isn't so easy. She would use a condescending tone when ordering and I never understood why she couldn't just be nice and friendly. I swear I read this comment or some variation of it at least once a week on Reddit. Also, another I read all the time, what should you never skimp on? Anything that goes between you and the floor. Tires, shoes, mattress, etc. The true measure of a man is how he treats someone who can do him absolutely no good. Samuel Johnson How they treat the person serving them in any situation from gas jockeys, to fast food workers to nurses to retail workers and convenience store staff. If ever they are in a situation where they have permission to be unkind, watch closely. The differences between someone who reserves their worst behavior for appropriate situations versus someone who fires away immediately at first opportunity that could be loosely construed as appropriate. Basically, anyone who is nice but is constantly looking for an excuse to be unkind is just a masked asshole. Willing to hurt someone else to get ahead you know as soon as you're expendable to them it'll be you. How they treat those who can do nothing for them. Look at how they treat the people around them. Do they treat people they perceive as being below them worse or with dignity and respect? I went on a few dates with a girl in uni who seemed lovely. 
TBH a fair bit more attractive than me as well. So I was buzzing. She was great with my mates. Made them all laugh, but when I met her friendship group there was this one girl who you could tell was a bit of a hanger-on, and the whole group teased her a bit, but the girl I was dating ripped into her. Like I was uncomfortable, but I didn't know the dynamics, so I held my tongue. After I asked what the deal was, I thought she'd offended her or kicked her dog or something, but she just says nobody likes her, and they just let her hang out with her, as they feel sorry for her, so who cares if they are a bit mean, at least she has friends. Safe to say we didn't go on too many dates after that grinny face was wet, but it was like a switch had flipped. There was no evidence at all she was like that. She was lovely to the wait staff. She was helpful to other girls on nights out. But as soon as she saw somebody she didn't like for no reason, she was an entirely different person. I later met somebody who shared a seminar group with her, and apparently she was similar there. Lovely with some people, including them, but a real dick to people she thought was stupid or beneath her. Talking about how all their friends left them or that they were kicked out of multiple friend groups. It keeps happening for a reason. If you run into an asshole in the morning, you ran into an asshole. If you run into assholes all day, you're the asshole. Raylan Givens justified. I mean like all my friends gradually left me and I don't really think I'm a bad person tbh. Gradually left sounds like normal life just getting older and growing apart as opposed to being kicked out of a friend group multiple times. I feel you. I had to cut out my two only real friends because each of them developed a drug problem, and I can't be around that. I tried, but I can't go down that road again. It sucks. You did what was right. You can always make new friends in the most unexpected ways. Fucking up the only life you have is much worse.